in my ministry, I have often thought of these prophets of the Old Testament who, like me, were on a special journey that God had called them to take. And I think about how because they were willing when God said, follow me, what an amazing life that they had lived and how God were, was able to use these ordinary people. Now, do I think that that life that they lived was easy for them? Absolutely not. But God was with them each step of the way. And he has been with me on this journey that I have been taking. And he is with each of you. And it gives me such comfort to know that, like these people of old, this journey is truly God's path and his agenda, agenda for each of us. And I can't help but think that he is using us as he used those prophets of old to fulfill his chosen plan. One day as I was contemplating my call that God had placed upon my life, I had been reading through uh, some of the Old Testament, and I had came across this passage in Exodus 4. And it's verses 10 where God was calling Moses to go to Egypt and uh, bring the Israelites out. And it said, but Moses pleaded. You see, he didn't just ask God not to send him. He was pleading with him. He said, oh God, I'm just not a good speaker. I never have been and I'm not now, even after you have spoken to me, for I have a speech impediment. Who makes mouths, Jehovah asked him. Isn't it I, the Lord, who makes a man so that he can speak or not speak, so that he can see or not see, so that he can hear or not hear? Now go ahead and do as I tell you, for I will help you to speak well, and I will tell you what to say. You see, unlike Moses, I can honestly say that I have never heard God call me from a burning bush. But like Moses, God has somehow thought that I was capable to lead his people. So many of the excuses and the arguments that Moses had had with God I myself have had with God, especially like this at the very beginning of my journey. In fact, there was a time when I was reading this very passage and it hit me so hard that I just broke down and sat on the floor and just cried. For you see, Moses had voiced my same exact feelings of unworthiness when he tried to explain to God that he was not a good speaker and that therefore he would not be a good leader. Because this was just exactly what I felt. You see, like Moses, I felt in my heart that I didn't know enough and what I did know I would not be able to put into proper words to explain to someone else. But what God had told Moses and me that day is that God is the one who is in charge and it is God who made mouths to speak. And it is God who would give us the words to say. And so with that, what choice did either of us have except to say, yes, God, use me and I will follow you. I now see that I was starting to be called by God even from a very young age. I had started to experience the same vivid dream over and over again as a young child. In the dream, I was standing alone at the front door of my childhood home, looking through one of the small windows in the door out into a dark black night, feeling as though I was watching for something or waiting for someone, maybe even expecting someone, and that I was being beaconed to come out, to leave that life behind, to go through the door for what or for whom I didn't yet know, but I can to this day still recall that dream and how I would turn my head and I could see the rest of my family sitting in the dining room at the table playing cards and I would stand there alone just watching and waiting. 
And Samuel, 1 Samuel 10, verses 10 to 11, Samuel has anointed Saul to be a king. And afterwards, as Saul was going home, he had came across some prophets, and he too began to prophesy. But when people around him saw this, they said, What? Saul is a prophet with a father like his? And I have often felt the same way because that Saul must have felt because I can almost hear people say the same thing. Faith is a pastor with a father or a family like hers. But faith, faithfully and thankfully, God doesn't look at our background. He doesn't look at our family. If so, there are so many throughout the Bible like Tamar and Rahab that would not be in the lineage of Jesus. And I would not be standing here before you today. You see, God doesn't take into account how well we speak or how much we know or even who our relatives are. When God is calling, he already knows what he's getting. He has already chosen us and he will take care of all the details. He just wants us to follow him. He will take us where he wants us to go and he will tell us what to do when we get there. Isn't that amazing? We don't have to do anything except show up. But sometimes that showing up part is actually the hardest part of the journey. Because to show up, we actually have to leave where we are. We have to leave that comfortable and familiar surroundings that we have gotten used to. And this is exactly what God had told Abram. God had called Abram to do just that, to follow him, to leave everything behind and go where he would send him. And Abram did just that. He packed up everything he owned and he left his familiar surroundings and his family members and friends and he had to leave his entire past behind, that entire past life that he had lived in order to gain the new life that God had in store for him. Abram didn't have to follow where God was calling him. He could have dug his heels in and refused to go. He could have stayed where he was and grieved the loss of his father and all that he would leave behind. But instead, we see that Abram did as God asked him to. Abram took his wife, Sarai, and his nephew Lot, and all of his possessions, and he left his country, not knowing where he was going or even if what he would find when he got there. He had no idea what his life would look like compared to how it had been in the past. But we see that he took all of his possessions. He took everything he owned because he knew that he was never going back there again. So many times we try to live with one foot in the past, one foot in the present, and then we become stuck. And we can't take that next step into the future where God wants to take us. But Abram took everything that he had because he didn't want to have any excuse to go back. No temptation whatsoever to return to his previous life. Abram was now committed to God. And he felt it was all or nothing. He was leaving nothing behind in that previous life. Because he knew that it was over. I can tell you that Abram was probably terrified. You know, even though he was trusting God... He was still scared of the journey. And I can tell you what kind of thoughts and anxieties might have been floating through his head late at night when all was quiet. I know because personally I've had some of those same fears and anxieties myself when God was calling me to leave my past behind and follow him into the ministry. Maybe many of you have experienced those same fears and anxieties. Do you remember when you decide to give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ? Do you remember the fear and anxiety of what would come next? Did you lay awake at night wondering where this new life as a Christian would lead you? 
Did you worry about what God might ask you to leave behind in order to follow him? Do you suppose that Abram's wife, Sarai, tried occasionally to talk him out of going? Would she have questioned him as to whether or not he had truly, truly heard from God? Do you suppose that his nephew, Lot, just kind of considered it all one great big adventure or maybe just a, a crazy idea? You know, I'm sure that my husband, Bob, felt that I had truly lost my mind when I realized that I was being called into the ministry. And I'm sure there was a few times when he was probably thinking, well, this is just one more crazy phase that his wife was having and that I would get over it, you know. But following God can sometimes be very difficult. You know, ask any pastor, ask any pastor's family, but we do it because God has called us to do it. You know, like Abram, God often calls us to journey a long way from home and to leave many things behind. And the journey can sometimes be very difficult and even unpleasant. I was born and raised in Mount Union. At age 16, I left home and married a man who had been divorced, and together we have raised his two daughters since they were age two and four, as if they were my own. These two same daughters who are now married and have blessed us with five grandchildren, daughters who don't remember anyone else with their father or a time when I wasn't there as we shopped for school clothes and prom dresses and wedding gowns, Daughters who don't remember a time when I wasn't there during their pregnancies and the birth of our grandchildren. My life's journey has taken me from Mount Union to Greencastle, where we set up housekeeping, where I went to nursing school, started working as a licensed practical nurse. And this is where I actually started to see how God's mercy and his grace works in the lives of people to heal and to comfort Sometimes I've witnessed firsthand this same mercy and grace when I spent six months in and out of Hershey Medical Center for cancer treatments as I battled acute myeloid leukemia in 2001. Just as Abram had his wife and his nephew with him for the journey, God has placed many people in my life to often journey with me. Friends and family, church members, sometimes even total strangers. Others were often called to journey with us through the rough times as we stumble and attempt to keep each other from falling. We need others around us because the journey through this life is not always pleasant. The road that we travel is not always smooth and the view is not always pretty. But all we can do is keep walking. One step at a time, one foot in front of the other. And we can be reassured through God's word that he never leaves us. He never leaves our side as we journey together. And he doesn't always know, even though we don't always know what is ahead, we can be assured that God has already seen that steep mountain that we'll need to climb. And he has already taken care to prepare and strengthen us to climb it. Sometimes the journey, though, is through the valleys that are deep and dark, valleys that we feel will never end. But whether we are climbing that mountain or wading through that valley, God is there. Each of these terrains can be a source of majestic beauty, each in their own way. My ministry journey has led me from a lay speaker to a certified lay minister and now to a local pastor. It has been a journey for me as I traveled first from Three Springs Parish, now here to Saito. And it has been an amazing journey for me, and I hope that the life God has called each of you to has also been an amazing journey. And as we get to know each other, hopefully you will share your past journey with me as I have shared my journey with you. The breathtaking mountaintops, as well as the deep, dark valleys. You know, we have all had those places during our journey when we have stopped and wondered which path to take and sometimes whether we just needed to stop and turn around and quit. 
And we have all had those times when we have stumbled and fallen. But through it all, God's word assures us that he is with us. Now together as we start another journey, and even though we may be fewer in number than we once were, we are not to fear the journey that God is calling us on. For God goes before us and he will send others to journey with us according to his perfect timing. Isaiah 51 2 tells us that we should not be concerned about being few in number, for after all, Abraham was only one man when God called him, and yet God made him into a great nation. Today, the first steps of our journey together begins. Today we will see, together we will see both the mountaintops and the valleys. We will share in the joys and the struggles of the journey. And together, we will leave the past behind us and step forth into the future that God is calling us to. I'm excited to be here with you and to take this journey with you. And I'm excited to be your new pastor and to walk this road as you, with you as we discover where God is leading us as a church and as God's people. I, for one, can't wait to see what God has in store for us, where the road will take us, and who we might meet along the way. The future is ahead of us, and our God is a God of new beginnings. Today, church, we take the first faithful steps as we start out on our journey to follow God, to leave our past behind, and to embrace our new beginning and our new life here at Saito. And we do it together. Amen. Let us pray.